All right, hey everybody. We are at the farm today. Uh, if you don't know, I'm calling this the farm. This is a piece of land that um, my family purchased and we are maybe someday going to move here. We'll see, that's kind of a future plan. It's always important to have at least a five-year plan. And this is one of those five-year plans. I guess I came out to the property mainly to just see what's going on it's been about a month uh, since I think the last time I was here and I laid down a little bit of seed and then I'm I basically came out here because I want to see how that seed is doing I also want to test out a few ideas and uh, basically some theories of mine to see how hard it's gonna be to maybe do a little bit of this clearing by hand it sounds like an impossible task it probably is I don't anticipate I'm gonna get very far. Today, we're just having some fun. I hope you stick around for that. Uh, if you like this kind of content, definitely subscribe. Um, drop me a like on this video and give me some comments down below. What are your suggestions for possibly clearing property by hand? If you're not familiar with some of my previous videos, I did have a forestry mulcher come out here and he did clear, I would say, somewhere in the ballpark of about an acre uh, but there's still a lot more to clear we're not going to clear everything on the property we do want to clear maybe somewhere in the ballpark of about two two and a half acres somewhere around there uh, i'm not looking to spend my entire week mowing grass <laughs> one one paddock at a time uh, that's not the idea. So hopefully a lot of this is just going to be forested, but we do want to manage it a little bit better than it is right now. As you can see, it's just a mess. I have a gas powered string trimmer with a brush cutting attachment and <laughs> I put a uh, blade on there and we'll see. I don't know if it's a craftsman trimmer. I don't know if it's strong enough, but we're gonna try anyways I'm rambling let's get to it let's get started <laughs> I need gloves there's briars everywhere and a hat why not So I'm not going to overuse. Um, I'm not going to overuse the electric saw because really I brought this as sort of an emergency backup. For example, if I was cutting into something with my gas chainsaw and I needed to cut my gas chainsaw out because I got it jammed up, then I would have this uh, to do that with. And so I'm not going to wear the battery down on these. I just wanted to use it really quick just to cut that one tree out of the way because it was sort of in the trail. And that's really honestly the, the strength of a lot of these types of, I'm super paranoid because leaves are falling and you know, it's a little creepy sometimes when you're out in the woods by yourself. Anyways, um, the, the real strength of, of electric chainsaws is exactly that it's for quick limbing or if you just need to use something on and off but you don't want to just leave your your engine running the whole time it's nice to just have something that plugs in you pull the trigger and it just works this does not necessarily have the power of my gas chainsaw at all my gas chainsaw will just blow this thing out of the water any day but you also have to maintain it. It's got a lot more maintenance involved with it. It's also a much heavier machine and you also have to keep the engine running if you want to use it sporadically or you have to just keep cranking it up and stuff and that's kind of a pain too. Anyways, this is test number one. We obviously know this one works. I did buy a new little toy and that's really why I came out here. So let's go try that. Okay. Toy number one, I bought a brush cutting uh, attachment. I didn't bring the blade that came with this. It was that sort of 
square shaped blade. I'm sure you've seen them before. They're pretty common with this particular attachment. Um, I just bought this on Amazon. It's the Trimmer Plus. I'm sure everybody's seen these before. I did also buy a blade and I'm going to go ahead and give this a shot right now and see if my little craftsman uh, is strong enough to uh, actually cut something with this. Wow. <laughs> wow. This, this little, uh, this little craftsman with that brush cutter attachment and, and that little carbide blade on there. It, it works. It works. I think what's nice about this is, you know, that blade cost me, I don't know, it was probably like 10 bucks or something. It wasn't terribly expensive and I'm not afraid to stick it in the dirt so I can really shave this thing down to the ground doing things that I would never ever dream to do with say one of my chainsaws. I'm not going to put my chainsaw that close to the dirt because it's just going to dull it, it's going to gum up the chain, it's going to uh, gum up the sprocket. It's not worth it. But a $10 blade that I, I, I expect I'll probably get some pretty good use out of. And I was cutting some pretty good stuff here. And this is probably not a good example of it, but um, I was cutting uh, even hardwoods that were about this diameter, which, you know, that's a good inch and a half. And I, I actually cut some thicker stuff a little further down there. So if I can cut anything that's like two inches or under down to the ground by hand this could work uh, of course it's going to take a very very long time but here's here's my my big vision so you guys are in in on the plan with me if i can cut these things down to the ground stack them up on piles then I can either bring my wood chipper out here or rent a, a larger wood chipper like the trailer pool style wood chippers out here and just make a big pile of wood chips. And so the first thing I want to do though is if I'm going to rent something, I want to make sure I've got that material stacked and ready so that all I got to do is just feed it for as long as I can have that rental. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is definitely come out here and just start making piles so that I can bring the chipper out here and then just start start chipping away. And so, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to work. But I'm going to try to keep a few trees here and we'll knock them down if we have to when it comes time to actually start picking the build site uh for the buildings for the house and the workshop and all the big plans i got <laughs> big plans <laughs>
all cleared up to there so I can actually make it all the way back to the trail that runs behind all of this here. My hands are starting to shake a little bit because I've been working that string trimmer for about two hours straight, just running at full throttle. So I'm sure it, it needs a break and I definitely need a break too. So I'm definitely going to call it right now, but not bad. I, I'm happy with the results, but I really need to ask myself how much of this do I expect to get done in a reasonable amount of time? So we'll see. We'll see. I'm still very impressed with, uh, with that brush attachment. It exceeded my expectations. So I'm happy with that. And it's definitely going to help me for doing odd jobs at the edges. I'm not going to be clearing acres and acres of property not as dense as it is on this property so to quote a famous movie you're gonna need a bigger boat <laughs> with that you guys as always be good i'll see you on the next one